All right. I want to just take a look at this example. Oops. All right, I just want to take a look at this example um, <clears throat> because I think this part of the issue here is I think the, the, the wording of a problem like this is just um, a little bit confusing for some of you in terms of in terms of what's being described. So I do want to walk walk through this, and I have a nice uh, animation too. So set up uh, it says set up an integral which could be used to find the volume of the solid. The solid lies between the planes y equals zero and y equals two. So let's just stop right there. That description is just meant to let you know that in your, you know, in your xy plane, right, your solid lies between the planes y equals 0 and y equals 2. Now, why don't they just say, that, you know, the lines y equals 0 and y equals 2? Well, they could have. It's just that we're talking about a three-dimensional object. So they're going to use the, the term plane instead. So in two dimensions, the line y equals 2 is right here. Right, the red line. And the line y equals zero, that's just the the x axis. Right? So what they're saying is just in this solid here, which is just fixed, it's just sitting on the xy plane, it lies between the plane. Now a plane you can just view of view as uh, like an infinite wall. That extends out, uh, that extends from the lines up um, vertically into space, in in both directions. Okay, so it's just your your object lies between those two planes. So that's just a description of where this this object is in space. Okay, so that's that. The cross sections perpendicular to the y-axis. So stop. What is a cross section that's perpendicular to the y-axis? Well, here is the y-axis. Here, this is the y-axis, so a cross-section perpendicular would be from the top view, that. That's a line that's perpendicular to the y-axis. In our description, uh, in our three-dimensional surface, that line would look like that. Okay, now again, I can't see the object itself. Um, the cross sections perpendicular to the y axis are semicircles whose diameters are parallel to the x axis and whose endpoints are on the curve y equals x squared over 2. Okay, so that last description there talking about the semicircles, that basically tells me what my object lo looks like. So right now, I just on the left, I have a top aerial view of this object that's just sitting in the xy plane. Right? And, and it's very much like in you know those old detective movies where the guy would show up later with the chalk and just trace, trace around the dead body. Right? That's what we have right here. We don't know really what it looks like at this point. It's just if we were to trace with chalk around the object, it would be this here. Okay. In terms of a visual of what this object looks like, I have a, I found a video so we can look at it. Here it is. Okay. So they're going to trace the graph. The left here is just the the x y plane. The right, we're in three dimensions. Okay. The x y z coordinate. So there's our graph, x squared over 2. So this here is the diameter of my semicircle. And here are all the semicircles that are being generated. So there is what the solid looks like on the right. That's it. I mean, you're kind of seeing through it, but you can get the idea. That's what the solid looks like. OK. And if we go through it again, you'll notice um, that the radius, therefore, just goes from the y-axis to the curve. Okay, so there's a nice visual, I think, of what, what's, what this object looks like. So let's go back to our picture. All right, and let's talk about how we would get the volume of this object. Well, we can take a cross-section, which would look, one of which would look like this. All right, and we analyze it. So 
So how do we analyze it? And what, what do we? What's our goal? Well, we want the area of this cross section, and if we want to speak of it as a three-dimensional object, we can give it some thickness. And the reason you might do that was is because it might lead you to um, to anticipate what the the direction of integration should be. Should it be dy or dx? Okay. So so how do I get the area of this uh, the semicircle? Well, I need to know the radius look at our picture here. There's our diameter. Our radius is this line here. So how can we describe that? Well, we would need to know something about this point. That point which is on the curve. We should um, we should label correctly. All right. So this is where you might want to think about what is, what's the direction of integration? Those uh, th this diameter is sweeping uh, from y equals zero to y equals two. So the direction of the integration is with respect to y. Okay, so that means I should probably change all this information here to be in terms of y. So that means my x coordinate I should change to be in terms of y. So I'll have to do that by doing a little algebra over here means x squared equals 2y or x equals the square root of 2y. And you can just use the positive square root um, since that's the, the line we're looking at. Okay, so therefore I can write that point now as the positive square root of 2y comma y. Now my radius, that is an x distance. So my radius I'm going to describe as the square root of 2y. So therefore, if I want to talk about the volume of this this, uh, this surface, it would be, or this solid rather, the volume would be, well, the area of a circle, pi r squared, cut in half since it's a semicircle. Okay, and this little distance here I'm going to call dy since we're integrating with respect to y, so the volume would be would be this. And if you clean this up, you get um, 2 pi y divided, divided by 2, which is equals pi y. Okay, so there is an expression for the volume of this cross-section. And I'm going to integrate that with respect to y from 0 to 2, 0 to 2, pi y dy. There is an expression uh, for the volume of this solid. And let's go back just to the video, just to end this, just to confirm, all right, again, aerial view on the left and then on the right you can see the solid <coughs> being generated. Now again one thing to note is that, that this same base could generate, there could be a different solid that would have the same chalk outline so again the detective comes by and, and, and traces it but the cross sections might be a different shape, and you would just have a different, you would just have a different uh, shape, rather than a semicircle. It could be a square. All right. In fact, in fact, take a look at this one before we before we get out of here. This would be the same description, except that the the cross sections are squares, whose bases lie uh, on the plane. And who, whose bases are parallel, or whose sides are parallel to the x-axis, and run from the two ends of the curve. <clears throat> okay, a new solid. And this is what it would look like on the right. Okay.